Hello and welcome once again to our family workshop. In this video, we're showing you the process that we used to make a jumbo jet model or toy in woods. Starting this process, what I actually did is to get a picture of a jumbo jet and use that to draw out the different aspects of the design that can be used and stuck onto the woods to create our jumbo jet. So I've drawn that all out on paper and I stick the paper drawings that I have developed onto the wood that I'm going to use. We stick the design onto the wood using a PVA glue solution. Once that glue has dried and our design is dry on the wood, we go across to the pillar drill and drill out any internal holes that we're going to need to do pierce work on our scroll saw. We use a block and a piece of sandpaper just to take any lumps or bumps that are created by drilling that hole. This means that the project will be nice and flat when we start the process of cutting out our design. We're onto the scroll saw. The feed speed's gonna be slightly slower because the wood is thicker. So you're gonna need a little bit more patience than some of the other projects that we demonstrate when we are working in thin in a woods. So we've cut out the outline of the main fuselage of our aeroplane. We also cut the gap that will be used afterwards to feed the wing of the plane into. The fuselage will need to be shaped on our belt sander, but to reduce some of the work involved, we cut some of the bulk of the wood away using our bandsaw. So the method I use to do this is to hold the piece at a 45 degree angle, feed it through the bandsaw, just to take off some of the bulk that we don't need for shaping the fuselage. Now the fuselage is basically the main component of this design because all of the other components are added to it. To give us some extra detail, we're using our hand carving skills to create the effect of the windows for the cockpit, the doors, and then the windows for the main fuselage. One thing that we're trying to do is to create the same image on both sides. So every now and then I am checking the other side where I've already carved to see if the windows roughly line up. Back across then to our scroll saw and we're cutting out the basic profile of the engines that will be added to the wings. Once again, the feed speed is on the slower end of the scale because we are using quite thick pieces of wood. I started off cutting them out on the scroll saw and actually found it too heavy going. So the second of the motors I cut out on the bandsaw because it was able to deal with the process a little bit more easily. Good example then for anyone who is new to either scroll sawing or woodworking. When you're dealing with thicker hardwoods, sometimes it's easier to cut them out on the bandsaw and then shape them on the belt sander than it is to get that better quality finish that you get with the scroll saw. The engines as well, this isn't a problem because once again, we were shaping them on our belt sander. So we're cutting them at that 45 degree angle on the bandsaw and then shaping it on the belt sander. From here then, we start to look at some of the other parts of the design. So the wings and the tail and little bits of trim that we're gonna put on the wings as well. We cut all of those out on the scroll saw. It's straightforward cutting these pieces out on the scroll saw because they are thinner pieces of wood. Once we've cut out all of the wings and the tail on our scroll saw, we're using the belt sander to thin every everything down. So the nature of the design when it comes to wings, they have to be fairly thin to fit through the gap that we've created, but also to be realistic when it comes to an aeroplane design. Afterwards, we go back to working on our engines. So we're using a drill bit to just drill down into the engines to create 
a little bit more detail on the front of the design. From there, we turn our attention to putting the whole design together. So we are adding our super glue accelerant, our Starbond super glue accelerant to the main fuselage of our aeroplane. And we add the super glue to the wings and the tail. We only get one attempt at this, so we measure the wings to make sure that we have them in the right position. If you do make a slight mistake, don't worry about it. You can always sand a little bit off one of your wings to match them up. But it is preferable if you can measure everything out and get it right the first time. We then super glue our engines to the wings and then add those little bits of details to the outside of either wing. The final part of the process we use is to add three coats of shellac sanding sealer, rubbing it down in between each coat. We then add a finishing layer of linseed oil mixed with beeswax. So dab the brush in the linseed oil, then rub it on the beeswax and add it to whatever project you're working on. It just brings things out and leaves it a nicer finish. So there you go, that's the process we use to make an aeroplane in wood. If you're interested in having a go at making that one yourself, check out the link in the description. You'll find the design that I drew on our website available for you to use for free. If you're new here and you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you know when we upload another video and as always thank you again for watching